we might be getting a huge update for the Steam Deck. And this is talking about a huge performance update for the Steam Deck, not just this software's new. This is a performance upgrade. Now, recently, if you haven't watched my video from like two days ago, check that out because it's about FSR 3 and the huge improvements we could expect to see on, well, console gaming, PC gaming, and also handheld gaming. So this isn't just Steam Deck, this is our Asus ROG Ally or whatever device you have. Now, we could be seeing doubled frame rates here on Steam Deck to the point where we could be running a lot of our games going forward at 60, or if you've got doubled frame rates from 60 to 120 on your Asus ROG Ally. Now, FSR 3 has recently been talked about at Gamescom. Again, if you haven't watched my video, do go ahead and watch that. But essentially what this is, is it is a up, uh, part of their upscaling. So from FSR 2, they've taken that and gone to FSR 3, and they've essentially copied what the video have done, and they've done DLSS frame generation. Now, uh, this is gonna be their own thing, FSR 3 frame generation, and it seems to be working very, very well. Now, we've seen already from the graphs that they've done and also from Digital Foundry reviews about the upticks in performance you could potentially expect. So as you can see here from Forspoken, 36 FPS up to 122. Now this is gonna be a very hand-picked case, but you get the point, you're gonna see increases. Now, even if you're getting minor increases from like this one, 60 to, well, it's not really minor, but 60 to 100, huge, absolutely massive increase in performance that it's just something that we just wouldn't expect. Now, this is something that's not only for AMD GPUs, but is for, they're doing it for NVIDIA GPUs, they're being very consumer friendly, even old GPUs down to the GTX 1080, and maybe below that as well, and even Intel GPUs might be able to use this. So this is definitely something that the Steam Deck is going to be able to implement very, very well. Now, uh, as you can see from this here, we can actually see that the Steam Deck, here we go, we're talking about the Steam Deck might get a performance boost. Now, it's pretty much definite that it's gonna get a performance boost. Valve is not gonna look at this and go, hmm, let's not bother. So, you know, this kind of negates the reason to have a second Steam Deck at this point, because you're gonna be able to run a lot of the games you're running at 30 or, or between 30 and 40, you could run those at 60 if you wanted. Now, obviously you have things like battery life that you'd be sacrificing on the Steam Deck. So it works slightly different with handhelds, but, if you do want 60 FPS and you're gaming in bed and you've got a charger near you, you can just flick on FSR 3 and you'll be able to get 60 FPS. So let's have a little read of this. So Steam Deck is around a year old, as we all know, and it, it's kind of changed the landscape and turned it upside down. We know that. Let's get to the point. Powered by AMD's RDNA 2 Aerith custom APU, the system is custom built to handle almost anything from retro titles to cutting edge AAA games like Armored Core 6 and Baldur's Gate 3. While Valve has stated that Steam Deck 2 could be a while off, a new feature announced today by AMD could help to extend the Steam Deck's lifespan significantly. FSR 3 brings with it frame generation feature, which was previously limited to DLSS 3 on RTX 40 series cards. Now we, we obviously know this, but um, speaking to the Dex, Dex Erto, I think is how you say it, AMD has confirmed the following. AMD FSR 3 is an open technology that does not require machine learning hardware. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that bit at the end. Allowing it to be supported on a broad range of products and platforms, including consoles. It is supported by on AMD RDNA 1 architecture-based graphics cards and newer or equivalent competitive hardware, but we recommend using it with RDNA 2 and RDNA 3 architecture-based graphics card. This is what the Steam, uh, Steam Deck does have. It's also supported on a broad range of competitive solutions, including yeah, well, RTX 2030 and 40 series cards. So, this is something that could be huge. Now, they talked about Starfield again. Yesterday's video, we talked about Starfield and it's not gonna be there at launch, but we could actually see a 60 FPS update for the consoles, which could be huge. But this is something that is almost definitely going to be implemented and going to be able to be utilized on the Steam Deck hardware. We can already do FSR2. It helps the Steam Deck massively get to certain frame rates. And uh, going forward, this is definitely something that we can see FSR3 coming to this device. So I'm just gonna pick a, ha a game off the top of my head, which is Last of Us. You can actually get between 30 and 40 FPS on the Steam Deck now. Now it's been fixed from all the awful bugs at launch. Uh, you can actually get 30 to 40 FPS on Steam Deck. I do plan on retesting this game on my channel, so stay tuned for that if you are interested. 
but FSR 3 could get this up to 60 or 80 FPS. Potentially, that's best case, it probably won't happen, but you could definitely see it get to 60 FPS. And uh, if you've got an Asus ROG Ally, the best thing about this is you have a VRR display built in. So you could actually use that VRR, which you would, and you would, if it did fluctuate to like 52 and then went back up to 60 or 70, you're not gonna see that kind of jittering. So it would work better for a device like the Asus ROG Ally, but still for the Steam Deck, we could actually get that 60 FPS lock in certain best case scenarios from a game that was at 30 or fluctuated between 30 and 40 FPS. We could see huge improvements there which would just make the device awesome. I mean, I know a lot of people use the Steam Deck as a low powered, at low end thing that they can just take games on the go. They lock it at 40 FPS or they lock it at 30 FPS because they don't want to use battery life, which is fine. You can absolutely still do that. But those people like myself who do sometimes just sit in bed and want to play a little bit of a game, have a power socket right next to you, even if you do still get an hour and a half unplugged out of this device, is perfect. I would absolutely choose 60 FPS on a handheld with higher graphic settings. And that's the other thing we haven't talked about. If you still want to lock it at 30, you can just potentially upgrade your graphics, put them onto the higher settings and use frame generation still and use DLSS 3 and, or oh, sorry, FSR 3. I keep getting those flipping things confused. There's too many threes. And you can just up your settings to ultra maybe on Last of Us and play it at 30 FPS still if you want. This is the thing. This is the great thing about PCs is everything is customizable. So we can do things like this. So I think this is huge news for both, all, well, all handheld PCs going forward. Anything that comes out, you know, with RDNA 2 as a minimum, ideally, I know it says RDNA 1, but you kind of want it to be, um, was it RDNA or was it FSI I was talking about? I can't remember. It, yeah, RDNA 1 architecture. Sorry, it does work with RDNA 1 architecture, but better with 2. So this is huge news to me. I'm, I'm very excited about this. They've even talked on stage about implementing it for the consoles. They've actually named Xbox as a console that will be having this technology added to games. So it, this, isn't a, this isn't something that's lighthearted. This is a huge thing that is going to change the landscape of... There's a freaking track to go and past. Change the landscape to gaming and handheld gaming and everything going forward. So that's it for this one. Please do leave a like, subscribe. What do you think down below in the comments? I, I do read my comments. For those of you guys wondering, I often reply to a lot and I do kind of listen to the community and, you know, try and uh, try and get information from what you guys want and what you guys need. And just one more thing to say, if we can get, we can talk about this in each testing video going forward. If we can get Starfield to run at 30 FPS on this handheld when it comes out next Friday, we could absolutely see FSR 3 implemented into this game one day where we can boost it to 60 fps on a handheld that's if we can get it i'm trying to think of games we tested recently that don't run great and last of us was one that i talked about on this obviously in this video but i'm trying to think of anything else that was like a game that was kind of crap returnal returnal is a huge one here that would benefit massively on a handheld with fsr3 but that's it i'm going to stop talking now let you guys get on with the day thank you so much for watching leave a like subscribe see you in future videos Bye bye for now